So as you'll recall, we gave you a scenario to have a look at from beforehand. And let me just refresh your memory. So you are the on-call FY1 doctor, and a 15-year-old girl comes in at 11 p.m. via the ambulance. She is conscious and says she fell over down some stairs. She's now bleeding profusely and requires an urgent blood transfusion. As you are about to take her to theatre, her mother arrives and asks you not to perform the transfusion. What would you do? Okay, so first of all, with the child being 15 years old, I can't assume she has the same capacity to consent as an adult. So to be deemed competent to consent, I first have to assess if the child is mature enough to understand what the procedure involves and its consequences. And I do this using, based on the Gillick competence principles. And if the child is deemed competent, then I could accept the child's consent and proceed with the transfusion. Obviously, I'd have to manage the situation with the mother, but I'd make sure that the transfusion wasn't being delayed before addressing the child's parents. If the child is deemed not competent, then I would have to gain consent for the procedure from the child's mother. So I'd first start off by explaining the seriousness of the situation, the reason why the transfusion is necessary, and the implications to her daughter's life if the transfusion was delayed or even not performed, and in the worst case, this could mean death. And if the mother was still not sure about carrying on with the procedure, then with the rest of the multidisciplinary team that are available, so anyone such as nurses or any senior colleagues, then I'd first try to find out the reason why the mother didn't want to give consent for the procedure. So the likely scenario is that she is a Jehovah's Witness, but it may simply be that the mother's worried about the risk of infection or she may have had previous bad experiences from hospital surgeries. And if this was the case, it would be more a matter of using empathy, good communication skills, to explain to the mother about how safe the transfusion would be, how blood is screened, and reassure her overall. If the mother still refused to give consent, then with the rest of my team, I'd have to make a decision that was in line with the best interest of the child. And in most cases, that would be proceeding with the transfusion. Even if you could be later taken to court by the girl's mother? Um, if I was confident and the rest of the team were confident that we were acting in the best interests of the child, then yes. I would proceed with a transfusion knowing that I may have to defend myself if the child's parents did decide to pursue criminal proceedings against me in down the line. In a hypothetical situation, if the treatment wasn't an emergency, I could always apply for a court order, which means that I could safely proceed. And how about if this girl was aged 16 rather than 15? Would your actions differ then? Um, so if the same situation, the child was 16, then I'd still assess her competence in case, for example, she has a learning disability or she's lost so much blood that she might not even be able to interact with me and give consent. But I think for children aged 16 or above, they are assumed to have the same capacity to consent as an adult, according to, I think it's a Family Law Reform Act. So if you're faced with an ethical question, normally you'll be given a few minutes before your interview to prepare. In this particular scenario, there are actually two ethical dilemmas. The first one being ability for a child under 16 to give consent, the second one being a Jehovah's Witness refusal of a blood transfusion. With any ethical scenario, make sure you're systematic in the way you approach your answer. So with this particular one, start off with the child's age and think back to the laws regarding to how consent works for each particular age category. So we'll quickly cover these now. For a child under the age of 16, 
You can't assume the child to have the same capacity to consent as an adult. So you need to assess their competence using the Gillick competence principles. And this involves two things, remember. The child's maturity and their ability to understand depending on the complexity of the procedure. So for example, a child under the age of 16 may be able to give consent in the setting of a broken arm, but they may not be able to understand the full implications, say, of a blood transfusion. Now, if the child is aged between 16 and 18, then it's a Family Law Reform Act of 1969 which applies. And this assumes that these individuals have the same capacity to consent as an adult. And if you're older than 18, then everyone's considered an adult, so they can give consent. Although there's some rare exceptions which we will cover later on. So in our case, looking back, the child is 15 years old, so we can't assume that she has the same capacity to consent as an adult, so we have to use our Gillick competence principles. Now make sure you follow each route down so the interviewer can really understand and follow your answer. If the child is deemed competent to consent, then you can accept the consent from the child and proceed with the transfusion. If the child is not deemed competent, then you have to gain the consent from the mother. Now, at this point, most students will simply assume that the child's mother is a Jehovah's Witness. But to really stand out, you want to show the interviewer that there may be another reason for this, such as the risk of infection. It's also really good here to throw in the buzzword multidisciplinary team, because it shows that you think as a team, and it's a good one to throw in because most ethical dilemmas are quite tricky in real life. So, eventually the mother will either give consent or continue to refuse consent. And if she does continue to refuse to give consent, then you end up acting in line with the best interests of the child. So in this particular case, the interview actually probed me further by asking about potentially being taken to court. And this is something that could happen to you on your interview. So first of all, don't panic, be confident. Remember, always stick to acting in line with the patient's best interests.